Peugeot has just released details around its two new electric cars. I've got to say, I absolutely love one of them. The other one, it's okay. However, they've also released something that I think is going to be more proven to be false. Their claims on efficiency. If those claims are actually true, they would be the most efficient EVs in the world. Is that likely? Maybe. Who knows? Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. It's great to have you here. Now, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you also to our Patreon supporters. Really could not do this without you. You guys make the channel work. You make it actually, actually function on a day to day, make it possible for me to make five videos per day on average. That's the average number of videos we do per day. So if you are not seeing those videos in your feed, just make sure you click on the little bell notification to get all of our videos in your feed so that you can find out everything that's going on. Well, not everything, but you know, the most important stuff that's happening in the world of EVs and battery technology. Peugeot has finally revealed electric versions of its 308 hatchback and its 308 station wagon or Avant or whatever you want to call it, shooting brake, or I don't know, whatever you call it in your country. Anyway, it's a wagon type car and it's going to be EV. So yeah, that's what I want. I'm a big fan of wagons. I've always loved wagons. They're so practical. And I really, really like the 308 wagon. It's one of the most practical vehicles in terms of the shape of the car that you can buy. Now that it's an EV, it's something worth considering. Will it be coming to Australia? Yes, it will be. Well, people are saying it will be anyway. Will it be coming to the US or Canada? I don't know. The UK? Yes. Europe? Yes. Elsewhere? Not sure yet. Now, unfortunately, it's not going to be available until the middle of the year in Europe. So other markets worldwide probably are not going to see these EVs until I would say the beginning of 2024. However, it could be worth the wait. The specs are pretty impressive. The 308 features a 54 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is 51 kilowatt hour usable with a lithium ion battery using a nickel, manganese and cobalt chemistry or NMC chemistry, similar to what you see in the non lithium ion phosphate battery packs in Tesla cars, for example. However, peak power from the front mounted motor is 115 kilowatt. Peak torque is 260 newton meters. So, you know, they're not exactly fast. Not exactly slow, but yeah, no, they are slow. Sorry, they are. But the truth is, this is all the power you need really for day-to-day -day use. And having less power in the car does improve efficiency. You'll, say, you'll find with EVs that have lower power motors, they often actually get more range. So that's sort of something you sacrifice with having more power in your car. Claim range on the WLTP cycle is 400 kilometers, although they don't know exactly yet if that will be the exact specs when the car comes to market. But we do know that it can charge from 20 to 80% in less than 25 minutes at a 100 kilowatt DC public charger. Now, because they've said it can charge from 20 to 80% in less than 25 minutes on a 100 kilowatt public charger, but they haven't disclosed the charging, I'm going to guess good chance it charges at peak power of 100 kilowatt, which is not fast. It's not terrible. It's okay. The onboard three phase charger that comes in the vehicle allows you to charge at 11 kilowatt if you plug into a home charger at your, at your house. Now, apparently Peugeot will help you get install installation of the correct charger so that you can charge at 11 kilowatt at your home, but it will require a bit of work and a bit of money to actually install that kind of charger. Now, this is the part that I'm not sure is going to be correct. Claim energy consumption is only 12.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That undercuts the Tesla Model 3 pretty significantly, which claims 13.4, and the Hyundai Kona Electric at 13.1. Is it really going to have 12.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers? Well, it doesn't have a structural battery pack, which will reduce the battery, the vehicle's weight. It's not really a revolutionary car. I think it's highly, highly unlikely without some sort of revolutionary new technology, some sort of at least something to say, 
Here is why it has improved efficiency. It's pretty unlikely to hit those numbers. So if you buy this car, I would don't be disappointed if it doesn't hit those numbers. Will it have good efficiency? I'm sure it will. I'm sure the efficiency will be fantastic. Will it be 12.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers? Uh, I would say 100% definitely no. However, here's what Peugeot says. They say the impressive efficiency comes down to an optimized front end and underbody for better aerodynamics. To be honest, pretty much all EVs have an optimized front end and underbody and a lightweight EMP2 platform with ultra low rolling resistance tires. So maybe they put slick tires on the thing to, to make it roll without any resistance or very, very little resistance providing this amazing efficiency figure. So as you can see, Peugeot haven't released any actual reasons at all for why it would be any more efficient than pretty much any other EV on the road or on the market right now. Beyond the electric powertrain, the E308 looks like a regular petrol version 308 and it features the same interior, which I've got to say is quite a nice interior. It's got the eye cockpit layout. It's got the, you know, the small steering wheel, the flat bottom. It's got nice digital screen in front of the driver, then a big digital screen in the middle of the vehicle as well. I really like their new layouts. I think they've done a really, really good job, Peugeot, on making the interior feel special in their cars. In Europe, there's gonna be three different versions that you can get. But at this stage, we don't know a whole lot of details on those three versions. When we do, I'll make another video and I'll release that information to you then. Now inside that dashboard in the middle is a 10 inch touchscreen and the screen in front of the driver is 10 inches wide as well. If you look beneath that central screen, you can see there's a row of touch-based shortcut switches, which can be customized by the driver. I think those are a really good idea. What that would mean is that you could do easy to easy to use functions, say like aircon adjustment, heating adjustment, those sorts of things. You could use a button instead of having to go through the touchscreen. That's probably a good option. Some people like to have that as an option as well. There are also piano style toggles at the base of the center console, wireless phone charging, and an array of USB-C ports all feature in the car, but that's pretty normal in cars these days, regardless of price. Now there's one interesting feature. Peugeot says that the My Peugeot application allows owners to schedule charging or precondition the cabin from their phones, while another app is designed to make it simpler to plot charging destinations or road trips. So essentially you could use the app to do things like charge the vehicle when charging rates are lowest. So you could use the app to make the charging turn on at say two o'clock in the morning if electricity rates are cheaper then, so you can charge it cheaper. That's one of the good benefits of having apps in cars, you know, new digital. People probably often think, well, why do you need all this new digital stuff? Like, what do you need an app for? That's one of the reasons you can save money. Another reason is if say it's a really hot day, you're at the beach, you could cool the car down when you're walking back to the car. You can actually turn the aircon on. So by the time you get to the car, maybe it's a five minute walk, the car's already cool, you get in the car. You don't have to get in a super hot car and burn your butt when you get into the car, you know, try and put towels on the seats, those sorts of things. That's one of the cool things with having the ability to use an app to control your car remotely. Now, one other interesting thing Peugeot are doing is the response to Tesla here, definitely is. In Europe, obviously Tesla is coming for, well, everyone. So are other brands, Chinese car brands. And what do they do? What does Tesla do? They sell direct, right? Well, what Peugeot plan on doing is selling the 308 online from start to finish rather than using a traditional dealer model. What does this mean for Peugeot dealers? I don't know, but they've got to be a little bit concerned because obviously they're doing this with EVs, right? Peugeot plan on selling all their EVs online. You can go online on the website, fill out the form, and actually purchase it online like you can with a Tesla car. I'm going to guess they won't be doing this in the US because of all the rules you guys have over there. But in Europe, that's what they plan on doing. Apparently Australia as well. So that's going to mean dealers, they're going to be pretty, I think, angry. Maybe what will happen is wherever your location is, let's say you buy the car in uh, New York, not New York, let's say you buy the car in Paris, then the dealer in that's closest to you would get some cut on that sale from Peugeot. Now this should be a pretty safe car because all models will come with active safety, including semi-autonomous lane changing, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and a new reversing camera and surround view camera, which will give you 360 degree view of around the car. Plus it comes with autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection, driver attention monitoring, traffic sign recognition, lane keep assist, auto high beam as well. That electric wagon, in my view, looks really, really good. I love it. 
I like the green color as well. I don't know. I don't, I'm not really a fan of green, but that green really stands out to me. I've got to say, you know, if you're looking for an EV, if you're in Europe, if you're in Australia, any other countries that sell Peugeot, they're going to sell these EVs. Probably you're going to have access to one of these EVs, the sedan and the wagon. Really good to have more choices on the market. And I think these cars will be priced very, very competitively. So definitely worth considering for your next car. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments section below, what are your thoughts on this new EV from Peugeot? Do you think that they'll be able to be the most efficient EV in the world? Do you think that's true? Can they back up that claim? Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching again. Bye-bye.